Hello and welcome everyone, Farouk here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a video to teach you how to download and install LD Player, which of course is an Android emulator application that you can use to play mobile games on your computer. If you aren't familiar with an emulator, essentially it tricks your computer into thinking that it's a phone and it lets you play mobile games on your computer in full HD, which is really convenient if you play a lot of mobile games and you know you don't want to just be on your phone at all times of the day. The reason why emulators are so awesome and this one in particular is because it gives you the ability to completely customize every button on your screen and map it to certain keys on your keyboard so that you can have a more robust gaming experience. So I play World of Kings, but regardless of what game you play, you can use this application to again, fully enjoy your mobile games in the comfort of your own home at your computer. In this guide, we're gonna teach you everything you need to know in terms of downloading, installing, and we're gonna run through some of the settings so that you can be set up with the best gaming experience for your computer. So the first thing you wanna do is open up Google, and you can actually just type in LD Player. Again, that's L as in Larry, D as in David, Player, and just hit Enter. The top uh, option here is gonna be the one that you wanna to go to. It's www.ldplayer.net. And as soon as you navigate to the site here, you can just click on download LD player. Now I've actually already downloaded uh, the version onto my PC, but I need to update. So we'll go ahead and see if I can just update. So you click download, run the application, and then you just click yes and install. It might ask you to update certain drivers, whatever, just click accept and make your way to the download process. And as soon as the application install is complete, you can click start. It'll start the application. We'll go ahead and make it full screen in the upper right hand corner there as soon as it launches. Okay, great. So as soon as it launches here, we'll go ahead and make it full screen by clicking there. And then there's an option on the right hand corner here. Uh, you can turn the volume up and down just by clicking or if you click this here, it'll actually make the entire thing full screen, which is very convenient. Uh, but we'll hit escape and just bring it to this uh, full screen here so you can see all the options. So on the right hand side, there are different options that you can use. Um, and we'll go through some of the more important ones, but the most important thing, of course, first of all, is this little button here, the home button. So you wanna click that, and first things first, it might ask you to log into a Google account. This is essentially just, again, pretending that it's a phone. So you'll log into your Google account, you can click system apps, and go directly to the Play Store here, at which point you can download whatever application you wanna install. So I play World of Kings, so we'll just type World of Kings, it comes up there. And then you have the option to play and update. I think mine is actually updated, so I don't know if I need to do that. But uh, once you have the application updated, you can click the home button and then launch the application. Now, kind of before you get started with all of this, this is just a, we'll go ahead back to the home screen. Before you get started with all of that, um, there is a settings button that you need to probably tune before you do anything at all. And so if you go in the upper right hand corner and look at this cogwheel here, click it and that will open up your settings bar. So let me go through the settings that I use. So under the advanced tab, I use tablet mode. So there's mobile and customize. I just use the tablet mode, 1920 by 1080 with the DPI at 280. Now, this is gonna be circumstantial for whatever kind of PC you have. I have no idea what's going on right now. <laughs> um, this is gonna be circumstantial and different for depending on what type of PC you have. And I'll link the stats for my computer in the description below. But generally speaking, two cores or four cores are gonna be giving you the best results for this emulator. And then the RAM, uh, I use 4096. That's gonna be uh, really, really good as well. But if you wanna go nuts and go six cores and go down to 8192 for the RAM, you can do that too, but it's not necessary. Again, this is what I use to record and play all of my content. If you don't have the disk management sent to, uh, set to 10 gigabytes, then I would go ahead and do that and expand it to 10 just to give it enough uh, memory to kind of work with there. But under the second tab, we'll go to basic, enable the first two screen rotatable lock landscape, lock size, I have it disabled. This is something that you wanna do is click enable root permission. I think uh, there's something in the settings that makes it play nicer with other applications. And so just do that. Uh, but then these are just kind of quality of life things. Uh, the exit options, if you exit out of the application, it'll prompt you and say, are you sure you wanna do that? So you can do that. But if you use a microphone or a loudspeaker, you can use your mic, like I use my computer mic in game with this setting here by setting it to the same output and input that I have for my microphone. Uh, going down to the properties, we have, this is the actual phone that this application is pretending to emulate. And so I specifically uh, use the, the Google manufactured Pixel 2, so you can click on the preset model 
uh, but the pixel 2 is going to be the best and i accidentally just changed that to that so let's change that back to pixel 2. i don't know if this is going to work but <laughs> that's the, that's what you want to do you want to look uh, google pixel 2 and then you want to enable uh, the high FPS for Arena of Valor. Now, there are different settings for different games, but I found that even over against the Full HD for Black Desert, these are just um, certain games that this company knows people play, and they have certain presets that help, but I found that the best settings are going to be the high FPS for Arena of Valor because frames per second being on the higher side is much more enjoyable than even having some HD qualities, which you can still get. Uh, but anyway, that's what you want to have for properties. When you go to network, this is not really that important. Just click disable for network bridging uh, if it's not disabled already. The shortcuts, this is gonna be, these are the buttons that you can press to actually enact on the emulator itself. I think one that I did change was F1 because this home button uh, was F1 and I actually bind something to my game using F1 when I play World of Kings and so I went here and I unbound it because whenever I would press F1 it would exit me out of the application instead of casting an ability so uh, that's probably one you want to change if you use the F1 key as a shortcut but next and probably the most important are going to be the game settings themselves so you want to go up here and click uh, support ASTC texture I think that most people will be inclined to click uh, VSync but that actually causes screen tearing it says that it prevents screen tearing, but it actually causes a lot of issues, a lot of graphical issues. So don't do that. Just click support, ASTC texture, uh, and then you want to go for the rate setup, the highest it'll go, which is 120 FPS. That doesn't mean you'll get 120, but it sets you up for the, the best case scenario in terms of frames per second. Uh, then you want to click enable high frame rate mode and uh, go down here to, to PUBG Mobile and PUBG Army. This again doesn't matter because it's actually taking into account what application you have and whenever you launch an application it'll hard change it to these but I clicked uh, 2k graphics card enable HDR and then 2k graphics card uh, for the resolution on the other one as well I think that's that would be sufficient but after you've saved those settings uh, you can go ahead and click on the application that you want to launch and we'll do go ahead and just do an actual guide for uh, world of king settings just to so i can show you exactly what i do use but let me log in real quick and then we'll skip skip ahead to that okay so i've went ahead and logged into world of kings and you'll notice it looks kind of grainy it's not that great and uh but the first thing i want to do for people watching who aren't playing this game is show you how to set up the key binds and of course we'll get to the graphics in just a moment so if you uh, click escape you'll get to the main screen here and what you want to do is click on this key mapping enable button in the upper right hand corner. So as soon as you click that, it'll open a key mapping interface. Now, the first thing you want to do here is uh, click on this move control wheel. And if you click that, it will make this appear on the screen. And basically you just drag it to wherever you want it to go. So I bring it here in that centralized location. And every time you press WASD, so if I, if I click out and click save, every time I click WASD, it'll move in a circle. So I'm not using my mouse, my mouse is over here, and I'm using the keyboards WASD to move around. So that's kind of the first thing, uh, the first fork in the road that you need to get out of the way. But other than that, you can set up these keybinds however you want. So the way that you make a keybind, uh, like a standard keybind, that's really the only one from this menu up here that you need to worry about. But if you want to make a keybind, you just click anywhere on the screen, and a button will appear. Now what you need to do is you can input any key you want. So let's say I want the, uh, let's say P to be a key bind. I would click P and then, so there's P and now you can move this anywhere on the screen. Let's say I want to move this to, uh, my, let's say my inventory. I know actually that would normally be I. So let's say I would make it I and move it there. And if you go over here and click save now, whenever I hit I on the keyboard, it'll press there and open up my inventory. So as you can see, the possibilities are endless. You can really customize this however you want. I have certain customizations where even buttons on my mouse will activate abilities. So if I click, uh, if I roll my mouse wheel up and down, it'll activate certain abilities, but I'm not in combat, so it won't do it now. But basically you can mess around with this and just do whatever you want in terms of button mapping. But this is what I use. Now on the right hand side, if you want, um, you can click this button here, show mapping hints in game and click save. And now if you look, every single button that you have will actually have the icon over it that you can use to, to press it. So if you're learning for the first time, you can go ahead and remember which button you need to press there by doing that but if you feel like you've got a good hold on it and you want it to hide and make it more clean you can click that and hide it 
So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, the other thing are here, it has reduced the inertia of right click moving. I'm not quite sure exactly what that does. Um, I think it makes it a little easier to aim if you're playing an aiming game um, and then show mapping instructions when the game starts. I, I don't think that really matters at all. But anyway, that's what I do. And I just click save there and make it max screen. So now if you're playing World of Kings and you want it to look better, these are the actual settings that I use. So if you click that, go down to system, graphics and display. The first thing I do is I put it on ultra HD. Now you think that looks good and it does look good. But here's the thing that a lot of people don't know. When you click on HD, the resolution is says highest, but there actually is an ultimate setting. Now watch how much more crisp this looks when I click this. Now that, that looks amazing. That looks super good. So people, um, if you if you aren't aware that there is actually an ultimate resolution option, that's kind of the first thing you want to do. So resolution ultimate, UHD, uh, depending on what computer you have or what type of computer you have, uh, you can adjust these however, but these are the settings that I use personally, all of those. Um, if you have graphical issues, you can uncheck anti-alias, but I keep it on because it works great. And then also this high frame button, you need to have that checked. If you don't have it checked, you can see things are kind of clunky, things are kind of moving around, not really at a great pace. It's playable, but it's not really super enjoyable. But if you go from there and compare it to this, where you have high frame enabled, and you move, it looks super clean, like way cleaner. And uh, obviously, as you perform and play content, you'll notice that the drastic difference uh, between having that high frame enabled and disabled. So that's going to do it for the LD player guide. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And if you did enjoy it, of course, like it, share it with your friends, subscribe if you are new to the channel. And if you have any questions or concerns or have any issues at all, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll see if I can't help you get that issue resolved. Anyway, thank you very much for your time and for tuning in. And until next time, my friends, enjoy your day.